Good morning, Abner. Morning, love. Granny, that boy is a spitting image of his paw when he was a kid of a boy his age. Hey, hey. Come on, come on, out of the way, Bessie. Get out of the way, get out of the way. Mm. Stubborn, I don't care. We need some new ordinances in this town, Ever. Ordinances? Yeah, some new speed laws. The way these cars whiz up and down the streets, it's worth a body's life to walk around the town. Yeah. Morning, Daly. Morning, morning Daly. Morning, Abner. How's Grandma this morning? Well, she appears to be on the improve. Well, I'm proud to hear it. Poor Grandma. She just went down something wonderful, ain't she? Yeah, well, I don't know where she's as sick as she lets on or not long. Grandma always did enjoy poor hell. Morning, Mose. Morning, Mose. Morning, Abner, love. Yeah, morning, boys. Good night, boys. <laughs> oh, yeah, darn it, I can tell. Well, sure, I believe the town's growing, Long. Hey, Long, have we got a sale going on now? Sale? No, not that I know of. Well, we ought to take them signs down then. They've been hanging there for over two years. Well, leave them up. We might decide to put on another sale someday, and if we do, they'll be there. Yeah, yeah. Talking about signs, look at the sign you put on the door there last night. Oh. Uh, Back in a few minutes. <laughs> oh, well, I must have hung up the wrong one, I reckon. Well, I'll fix it right this time. Well, we're open now. Uh, oh, Great. yeah. Supposing somebody to come down here last night won't be getting the door and seeing that sign hanging there. What do you suppose they'd have done? Well, they'd have went on back home, I reckon. You know nobody ain't gonna stand there and look in the door all night. Eh, uh, Grannies, I wish I'd have got myself a partner that can think. Is that so? Well, let me tell you something, Lum Edders. If I'd have did any thinking, I wouldn't have been your partner. Now, uh, don't start no argument. I either. ain't arguing. Well, you started it. I never done no such a thing. You did done it. Said you wished you'd have got a partner that could think. Well, I still wish you too. Yeah, there you go again. I don't get where's that rope. What are you going to do? Hang yourself? I hope so. Oh, sir, I'm going to run it right down through the metal here and divide up the store. You're not going to do no such a thing. I am done it. Get that broom and get this store swept out. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he'd see it my way. Oh, there's something wrong with you, though, the way you can't do it won't work around here. Back behind. Don't be afraid of me here. Oh. Yes, sir, I believe I can use you. <laughs> oh. I guess that's a good idea. What do you think you're doing? I'm setting a trap for old Grandpa Masters. Sure, him will run his hand down this cracker barrel so promiscuous. Uh, I'll get him. You wait and see. Mm. Uh, looks like another one of them drummers. And a good good morning to you, gentlemen. Morning. Well, it's a mighty fine little place of business you have here. Very modern, very up to date. Kind of unusual for a town of this size. <laughs> I'd say she's on the vein. She's in the groove. Well. <laughs> All right, Grandpa. The boss in? Well, I'm the boss. Her half of him. I mean. 50-50. Well, well, that's fine. That's fine. I'm Peter Atkinson, traveling salesman for the Hotchkiss Drug Company Incorporated. Home office, Chicago, Illinois. What? Introducing a new line of bath salts that I'm sure you gentlemen are going to be interested in. Well, why would anybody put salt in their bathtub? They don't taste the water. <laughs> why, of course not, Grandpappy. This bath salt is just to perfume the bath water. And it comes in six delightful fragrances. We have Violet, Trial Fast, Vimophore, Bilgetone, Rose, and Lila. I'm afraid we wouldn't be interested. I can't understand it. You haven't even given the product a trial. Yeah, I'd love to see you in a Violet bath lawn. <laughs> 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 now, you're cooking, Patty. And uh, as I said before... Uh, now, I'm afraid we wouldn't have no sale for nothing like that around Pine Ridge here. We just take our baths straight. Well, as a special introductory offer, Gentlemen, we are giving away absolutely free... What free? Absolutely free... Oh. ...this little gadget that we call the Tidy Tape Wrapper. Hey. Well, what's it for? For wrapping packages. You mean that little gadget there wraps packages? Yeah, that's mighty interesting, but 
See, we always use string. Well, I don't know now, Lum. This might come in right handy. Ha, <laughs> ha. Now you cook it, Pappy. Not only that, this is, uh, this is a very modern little item. And if you fellas don't mind me saying so, your store's in a very run-down condition. In fact, the matter is, your town is in a rut. Now, if you'll try my bath salt... They'll get us out of the rut, huh? Yes. <laughs> now, if you'll just sign this little piece of paper accepting this gift, so I'll have a little something to take to the home office. Why, sure. <laughs> we'll leave you a bottle of these salts, too, Patty. <laughs> thank you, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you very much, and your case of bath salts will arrive about the latter part of next week. Well, wait a minute. We never bought no bath salts. Beg your pardon, but your partner signed for the case. Huh? Gentlemen, you'll find that I've done you a great favor. And you'll receive a bill from the home office. Good day. Take care of yourself. And until I see you again next year, don't take any more nickels. Corny, ain't he? Yeah, such prattle, prattle. Bass Granny's what will they think of next? <laughs> I wouldn't have bought nothing from that smart Ellie. Come in here knocking our town, saying we're in a rut. Who asked him about it anyway? Well, I don't know, Abner. He ain't altogether wrong. Pine Ridge may not be needing bass rolls, but there's lots of things they do need. What? Well, we need a new schoolhouse branch again. Oh, yeah. Or to have some traffic lights to slow down these racing drivers around town here. And a first aid station to take care of the folks they run over. Yeah. That's our ring, ain't it? I never paid no attention. Yeah, yeah, I believe it was, yeah. I thought it was. Better go answer. Oh, it's too early in the morning. For goodness sake, Chandler. Well, what would anybody be wanting this time of the day? Good morning, Mr. Long. Good morning, Mr. Abner. Yeah, morning, morning, Jimmy. Jimmy. What do you know, sis? I made it from the depot with a minute and 42 seconds flat. Well, that's the best I did. Hey, Jimmy. Come here, man. Would you take this deal ever over to the wetter Abernathy fur? Sure. With her Abernathy's. Yeah. I thought we'd decide not to send no more stuff over there on a credit. Oh. And she ain't paid a nickel on her bill in over four months. No, uh, well, she brung this list over here yesterday evening. And I just couldn't hardly say no to her long. Got all them young'uns over there to feed. And I cut out a can of sorghum. I, I figured they could do without that. Yeah, but we can't keep sending stuff over there, Abner, when we know we ain't going to get paid for it. No, no, I guess you're right. Hand them back, Jimmy. Wait a minute. What do you think you're doing? Well, I'm just going to put this stuff back in the shelves. You give them back to him. What do you want them children to do over there? Starve to death? Go on, Jimmy. Take them on over there. Put it back. Take it. Put it back. Take it. All right, Jimmy. Uh, better take a can of them sorghum as long, too. Yes, Mr. Long. And he's about as much judgment as a two-year-old youngin'. No wonder we can't make no money in the store business. Yeah. We're still in business, ain't we? Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to announce the arrival of a new citizen at Pine Ridge. Time, 6.45. Weight, 8 pounds, 4 ounces. Name, Michael Patrick Dolan. Another? Yes, and am I tired? Any patients been upstairs since you opened? No, not that I know of, Doc. Morning, Toots. Dr. Walt, how many times have I told you it isn't Toots, it's Toots? All right, Toots. Any mail? Not a thing. Good. I won't have a lot of bills then. What's the news? Well, your adoring son just called. His new mobile unit was just delivered, so he's not coming over today. Oh. Uh-oh. Looks like the beginning of an awful bad day. Good morning, Miss Ben. Good morning. And it's just hard to think about Doc Walt being the same promising young fellow that was courting Jessica Spence about 25 years ago. You mean she was courting him? Morning, Jessie. Morning, Will. Morning. Morning. Good morning. We, we were just talking about you. Yeah, I can imagine. What can we do for you? 
I have indicated the prices in the article. And I want no substitutes. You don't want no what? Substitutes. Oh. We ain't got none of that no way to know of. Any mail for your Aunt Jessica? Quite a bit. Here. You ain't got no old clothes you won't be needing, have you, Jesse? When I don't need my clothes, I sell them. What's wrong with that thing, anyway? Well, my keys. I ain't been able to lock my house for two weeks. <laughs> As I was saying, Jesse, there's a family of folks living down there by the sawmill that's having a pretty hard row to hold. You know the Hornsby. Yeah. Well, Miss Hornsby's just about your size, and me and Abner was just thinking if... I uh, said when I don't need my old clothes, I sell them. I thought that's what you said. Same time, it don't hurt to be a little neighborly once in a while. Sort of lend a helping hand. When I want a sermon, Lum Edwards, I'll go to church. Here, Lon, take this, man. I ain't preaching no sermon. I'm just trying to use common sense. Why don't you use a little of it yourself and finish my order? I want a broom. Well, there they are. Which one you want? Oh, anyone will do. What about the one there at the white oh, hand? Get that out of my face. Oh, careful. Excuse me, Jesse. You're always so clumsy. Ball him out. Well, hurry up with the order and... Take it out to the car. <laughs> Say, Lom, we, we got our grocery orders up now. How, how about playing a game of checker? <laughs> no, I don't know, Abner. I don't much feel like it. Just one game. Well, you ought to at least give me a chance to get even. Get even? Granny, you couldn't get even if you lived to be 400 year old. You owe me uh, $6,720 and a quarter now. Oh. Hey, you couldn't win that back at two bits a game if you lived to be 5,000 year old. That's the way I lost it, ain't it? Yeah, but you ain't gonna live as long as you did before. Ain't gonna live as long as I... Huh? Nothing. <laughs> Go ahead, I'll play you one game. Oh, well, you, you take a red eye. What's that burning? Oh! <laughs> That's just Ed's shoes. He's got them too close to the stove again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, too goodness. Sit there and give yourself a hot foot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wish to goodness that fella go to work. Well, he can't, Long. Ain't none of his kind of work here. He's a steamboat man on a river. Well, we ain't got no river in Pine Ridge. I know it. He said that's what he's waiting for. He'll go to work if they ever put one through here. For goodness sake. Sure move. How much did you say I owed you? There it is. Read it for yourself. Six thousand seven hundred and twenty dollars and twenty-five cents. Just one more game. No, no, I'm through with you. Just one more, Lon. Abner, I've told you a thousand or a hundred times I'm tired of playing. Well, I'll play for you then. Play for me? Yeah, I can play for both of us. For goodness sake, that'd be a fine game. Well, I ain't gonna cheat. I don't care. That's our ring, ain't it? Yeah, I believe it was. Sure was a world. That's All right, I'll get it. But which color you want, Mom, the red or the black? I told you I ain't playing. Well, I'm going to play for both of us now. Which one do you want, the red ones or the black ones? I don't care, Abner. Well, I'll give you the red ones. Well, here, I'm going to do that. I better move around here. Jot them down, store. I'm Edward's doing the talking. Which one of us moves first? Who? Oh, oh howdy, Mamie. Long. Huh? Which one of us moves first? Oh, I don't care, Abner. You're playing. Run the game to suit yourself. Well, I'll move. Now, what was it for you, baby? Right there. Sure move, Lom. Huh? I ain't talking to you. No. All right, Abner, old boy, I'll move right there. 24 or 48 pounds, Sam. I'll move right there. 
And I'll move right there. What else, then? Don't be sure down there. Uh, just a minute. Abner, have we got any more of them seed potatoes left? I don't know, Lon. Don't bother me. I've got troubles of my own here. You just made an awful good move. Yeah, I did, huh? <laughs> what? Uh, I'll tell you, I'll look and see directly if we have. How many did you want? Sure move. Oh, no, I uh, moved right up here, and I moved yeah, right up there, too. too. But I moved here to get you. I weren't yelling. I'm arguing. Well, cut out arguing then. Well, you started it. I never done no such a thing. You said it was my move, and it weren't. Well, if you can't play for me without arguing, just leave me out of the game. Oh, see there, Smarty? Yeah, what else for you? Move. Uh -huh. I told you it was your move. All right, I'll move. I'll move right yeah. there. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, I'll five move. or ten pounds. And I'll jump you, too. And I'll jump right in your You'll have to talk louder, Mamie. I can't hear a thing you're saying. You move back there. I'll never done I'm going to have to call you back, Mamie. I can't hear you. You moved up here, but then I'll move right there. Wouldn't you expect me to take down a order and you carrying on like that? Well, Mom, you excuse me of making a move that I never made here. I was... Just leave me out of the game. I granny play with somebody else. Who? I don't care who play with Grandpappy Spears. Oh no, he cheats too bad. What difference does that make? Play with Cedric We Hunt then. I don't care. Well, Cedric don't even know how to play. Well, you're playing for both of you, ain't you? Now, I'll play with Grandpappy. I'll just have to watch him close. What you better be doing is closing the store up. Closing the store? Well, sure. Is it that time of day? You better pull them front shades down before some customer comes in here. All right, don't get it Begin to think Grace had forgotten this was the 15th of the month. He just lives and drinks from check to check, doesn't he? Good evening, Wes. Hello, Doctor. Uh, is my pension here yet, Alice? There you are, Wes. Can you do this long? We ain't got eighteen dollars in the cash store. We could cash a check for Wes, have we? Uh, uh, oh, eighteen dollars is a pretty big check for us, Wes. Yeah, suppose you wait till tomorrow and take it to the bank. Oh, give me that check. Happy Lou, I told you to stay home. There's no time for little girls to be out. I wouldn't be out if you wasn't. I reckon you better give it to her, Wes. Now, you sign it, Paul. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, Dr. Boyer. What else for you now? Some ketchup. Yeah. Bottle of ketchup. And there's your corn, and there's your tomatoes. Oh! Well, <laughs> uh, Granny, that's good enough for you. <laughs> I want a cheap tablecloth. A uh, cheap table. Abner, get one of them red and white tablecloths over there. And a package of tea. Well, I get any change at all? Oh, yeah. There you are, Wes. Thank you for your business. How would you like to have one of these new handkerchiefs? All Mother Goose Rhyme. Take any one you want, just a thing for a little girl like you. There's Simple Simon and Jack and Jill went up the hill and Humpty Dumpty and Little Red Riding Hood. Can I have Little Red Riding Hood? Why, sure you can. <laughs> Mrs. 
just so awful nice to me. <laughs> Strictly business. Here's your tablecloth, honey. And I uh, sewed in a pair of gloves for your Paul. If he ever goes to work. Thank you, Mr. Abner. Don't make it up. How much did they owe us, Lom? I don't know, Abner. I never paid no attention. Now, we can't make money doing business like that. We're still in business, ain't we? gets here, she might have some broke bones. Yeah, what happened, honey? Kenneth, tell him to get that mobile unit over here as quickly as possible. Yes, Dr. Wolf. Are you going to tell? I don't know whether I ought to or not. Could have been Jessica. No, I'm not going to tell. And you've got to promise not to say anything. Oh, keep on. Hurry, Ken. Please hurry. Nothing now. Might have gone with her. I can't think that way, Wes. Nobody ain't gonna blame you, Wes. Taking it pretty hard. Seems to blame yourself for everything that happened. Yeah. I wish Kenny could have got here. But 80 miles is a lot of ground to cover. It's a matter of time. Yeah, I reckon so. What are you thinking about, Long? I was thinking about what that drummer feller said this morning. Drummer? At a time like this? Yes, sir, I grannies, I believe he's right, Abner. What this town needs is more progress. If we'd have had one of them first aid units like they got over at Adams Town there, little Effie Lou might still be alive. Oh. Yes, yeah, she might be, huh? Yeah. Well, good night. Good night, huh? I'm kind of glad Ken's staying over. We'll do some fishing while he's here, I expect. It's fine weather for it, dog. Oh, the signs is right. Ain't no doubt about that. Better to have to get behind a tree to bait his hook. <laughs> Doc, you recollect the last time you went fishing? Had little Effie Lou with you. How has West been behaving since the accident? Ain't tested the draw. 
and says he don't intend to. I just wonder, reckon how long West is going to be able to keep them good intentions, not having nothing to do except sit around and think about if you lose. You're quite a psychologist, Lum, and you're right. West should be kept busy at something. There's nothing like hard work to keep a man on the straight and narrow. Yeah, uh, something like uh, sweeping out the store. <laughs> well, hardly that. I mean a job with a certain amount of dignity. West should be kept busy at something that carries a lot of responsibility. Responsibility. And accepting the responsibility and duties of deputy constable, do you hereby solemnly swear that you will uphold and enforce the law at all times to the best and utmost of your ability? I do. Then, as constable of Pine Ridge, with this badge, I do hereby pronounce you man of life. That's what comes to being justice of the peace, too, you see. I now pronounce you deputy constable. Well, might now marry you off that time, Wes. Yes. <laughs> Brother <laughs> officer. Thanks, Caleb. I won't fail you. I know you won't, Wes. <laughs> I got a spice for you. Come on. What is it? Oh, you know. Oh, there, yeah. They are, Wes. That's all yarn. That a dandy, Wes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a real one, ain't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sirene on it and everything. Like all you got to do is step on it. Yeah. yeah. Lake of trick headlights and everything. <laughs> Wes, you're to use that car specially to catch reckless drivers. Listen, Caleb. I'll put the fear of the Lord into him. You can bet on that. Well, Wes. Good luck. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Now, Long's got some ideas on tracking down the fellow that run over Effie Lou. Well, Uncle Henry Lunchford was telling me the night of the accident, he seen some headlights turn in that lane there by his place and stop. Somebody got out of the car and looked it all over right good and then got back in the car and turned around and drove back to town. Well, now, my ideas is this. Whoever run down Effie Lou lives in Pine Ridge. Or if it had been an out-of-town car, that he kept right on going. Sounds reasonable to me. Well, suppose we go down there and look the place over then. All right, get in. Uncommonly fine car you got here, Wes. Well, now, according to what Uncle Henry Lunsford said, the car must have turned in off the main road right about here. I brought Elizabeth's reading glass along, thought we might could use it. For goodness sake, such foolishness. Now, we want to keep our eyes peeled for clues, fellas. Clues? Yeah, tar tracks and footprints and one thing and another. Oh, oh! Say, was it a big car or a little car, Uncle Henry saying? Well, he never said, Wes, but the way I had the thing Mom. figured out, the car must have come right Mom. down here. Abner, will you shut up? Me and Wes is trying to figure this thing out. The car must have come right well, down Mom. here and stopped. And the Mom. Abner, will you shut up? The car turned Mom. down here and stopped and then backed up here and turned around and went right on out the big road there. Help! 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 Mom! Come here, Mom! Come here! Get, get that thing off of me! Get him off! Get what, him off! What thing? That varmint on my fist there! Get him off! Well, get him off! But a little old ant. Ain't nothing you've ever seen an ant that big in your life. Knock it off, Mom! Well, you're looking at it through that enlarged magnifying glass. That thing zaggerates. Oh. Doggy looks big enough to bite a fella's arm off. For goodness sakes. But, Lum, what I want to show you is this heel print here. Well, we ain't interested in nothing you found, Abner, me. Yeah, yeah right there. There. Hey, Granny's looky there, Wes. Whoever got out of that car was wearing rubber heels, and they left a four-leaf clover on every one of the heels. Looky there. Lump, well, that's it. There, that's Granny. it right there. <laughs> Congratulations. You sure figured it out. Ah. Uh, oh. Uh, 
Uh, Granny, me and you ought to put in a detective agency, you know. That's right. <laughs> Reckon we ought to go tell the constable what we found? Right now. Come on, Abner. Me and Wes has done got the uh, things uh, off. Well, them things still look too big for ants to me. That ain't no ants, you idiot. You ain't looking through that glass now. That's a tarantula spider. Uh, oh! Oh, my goodness. Oh, did Uncle Henry Lunsford told me that same thing? So yesterday I drove out there and looked for myself. You did? I sure did. Now look careful, too. And I didn't see no tire tracks, nor footprints. Well, they was big four-leaf clovers. Oh. Come on, fellas. You're gonna have to get some different clues. <laughs> nice sneaking up here for the day. Pine Ridge is still home to me. Yes, it is now. But from the moment you carry your bride over the threshold, we'll have to drag you out of Adamstown. And that'll be soon now. Not so soon. When you postponed the wedding. You have? There wasn't much else to do after Alice's Aunt Jessie laid down the law. It sounded like a scene from East Lynn. When Alice goes out, Jimmy goes out too. He's Alice's responsibility. <laughs> How's everything in the kitchen, darling? Won't be long now. Good. When he married your mother, he only had $8 in his pocket. No. Well, he told me. And, Ken, if there were just the two of us to consider, I'd marry you, even if you had less than that. I know that. Come in, Caleb. 
Yeah, howdy, Caleb. Hello, Lum. Hi, Abner. Oh, tolerably, I reckon. I bring you some eggs, Lum. The little woman says there's two dozen and four there. But you better come on them, huh? What's the matter, old Doc Walt? Is he ailing, Abner? No, he's just been working uncommonly hard here late. Just hard. Recollect the time, Abner, 13 years ago when I was took with a fever so bad? Everybody plumb give me up, except Doc. He stayed with me and pulled me through it. Has that been 13 years ago? Yeah, 13. 14. 16. I ain't no this time sure does fly, don't it? Yeah, I took down back in the spring of 27. 28. How old is Doc, anyway? Oh, I'd say he's 50. Oh, yeah, he's past 50. One, two, three, four. And he ain't as agile as he used to be, neither. Look at old Doc Miller over Doden. He's 70, and he's still at it. More than that, he's 72. Three, 76. 76, I get, Caleb. 76? That's what I counted, Caleb. Let's see, 12 into 76, 12, six. That's six dozen and four. Six dozen and four? I uh, agree, your woman was about to count you out of four dozen of eggs there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want the cash for them or just credit on your bill? Oh, no, just credit on the bill. <laughs> How about selling you some of them prunes there, Caleb? I never did like prunes, Abner. We've got plenty of eggs now. We ought to put a setting of these under old Ed over there. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Sounded like it was upstairs. It is the one we're knocking. There it goes again. Must be Dr. Walt. We better go up and see. I can't seem to use my arm or leg. I'll be all right in a minute. I think like this ever happened to me before. Better call Kenny, Abner. No, don't call Kenneth. I don't want him to worry. Call him anyway, Abner. And hurry. Where does it hurt the worst, Doc? There's no pain. It's just temporary paralysis on the right side, that's all. Paralysis? Oh, Dr. Walt. Don't worry, Toots. I'll be all right. Here, let me make you more comfort, Doc. terrible for him. He's so used to being active. I don't see how he's going to stand it day after day. He's a hard man to look, Alice. You know what he just told me? He wants to carry on. He says his hand might be paralyzed, but not his mind. 
But, dear, you know he can't. And you can't leave him here alone. I'll get someone to stay with him for the time being. But when he sees it won't work. And I'll hint to him as tightly as I can. He'd be better off in Adam's town. Must be having another one of his night or er, day mares. Yeah. <laughs> well, Abner, what is it? I don't know. He wanted to talk to you, but he didn't want to talk to you without me along. But I don't know what he wants to talk to you about. All right, Abner. Look, gentlemen, Miss Spence is a very busy woman. Will you please state your business? We've come here on a very important matter. Well, I'm waiting to hear what you have to say. Uh, it ain't nothing new, Jesse. I've said it before, but... Me and Abner's lived here in Pine Ridge about as long as anybody. We'd like to see the town get ahead. And what is it you want me to do this time? Well, Doc Walt collapsed in his office last night. Had a heart attack. He won't be able to make no more calls. And that leaves Pine Ridge without a doctor. Unless we can get Kenny to come over here and take over his father's practice. Of course, we can't expect him to come back here unless Pine Ridge is willing to give him the same things as Adams down. Miss Spence isn't concerned whether he comes back or not. Exactly. When I need a doctor, I call for a good one from the county seat. Well, Jesse, there's lots of folk here in Pine Ridge that can't afford to do such as that. And so we thought if you'd had a subscription to buy Kenny one of them first aid units like they got over at Adamstown, we... You ought to know that I'm not helping either Dr. Walt or his son. You're wasting your time. Why don't you ask someone else to help you? Won't do no good. As Jesse goes, so goes Pine Ridge. Is that all you wanted to say? Well, not all we want to say, but all we better say, I reckon. Then if you gentlemen will excuse me, I have some more business to talk about with Mr. Danielson. Yeah, come on, Abner. Would have had more sense than to go out there and talk to her in the first place. Any business while we have gone? Yeah, Miss Seastrunk was in, got a couple of cans of harmony and a can of bacon powder. Yeah. Reckon where Alice is at? I don't know. She must have went out. There's a note there on the post office. Says, if you want me, I'm upstairs with Dr. Wall. Alice. Well, there's some mail she ain't sorted, neither. Oh, we might have it here and there ourselves. James Houston. M.K.'s camp. Here, what's the combination? Hey, 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 hey. What about you going, young fella? No, I wasn't doing nothing. Well, of course you wasn't, except hiding. I don't know what you're going to hide from me and Abner for. No, I wasn't hiding. Honest, I wasn't. I just didn't want you to see me. Well, whether you was hiding or whether you just didn't want us to see you, it don't make no big difference. You mean you really don't care why I was hiding? You don't want to know? Me and Abner always tends to our own business, don't we, Abner? Well, uh, you do. Sit down, Jimmy, and let's talk this thing over here. <sighs> How'd you know something was worrying me? Well, 
folks don't generally go around hiding and acting scared like unless something's bothering them. Here, have an apple. I'm not very hungry. Oh, <laughs> boys is always hungry enough to eat an apple. I right, sure. Haven't you got something you want to tell us, Jimmy? If I knew something important, something I've been keeping a secret, something I ought to have told, is that the same as lying? Well, uh, no, not exactly the same, but all the post. I don't know whether to say it's worse or better. Do you, Abner? Uh, worse, I'd say. again today. Yeah, Jimmy must still be sick. Yeah. I reckon Alice will have to stay home with him again. Good morning. Morning, Washington. How's Jimmy, Washington? Don't know. Miss Alice sent a word about it. She wants me to buy some mustard so she can make a plaster. Well, you get the mustard in, Abner. I'll take a look at the mail. Yeah, sure. Love and Abner sure getting popular, Abner. It's the bigger sack of mail today than we got yesterday. Be getting that new mobile unit for long now. Well, I know that if you kept on trying, you'd finally get an idea someday that'd work. There's your mustard, Washington. Okie doke. Anything else for you? No, not here. But I gotta go upstairs and buy some thermometer from Dr. Bond. Well, you better skedaddle in. Jimmy needs a doctor. I'm going to call Dr. Walton and find out what to do. You'll do nothing of the kind. Dr. Barnes is not going to treat anyone belonging to me. But Aunt Jessica, Jimmy's sick, very sick. We can't be fooling around with home remedies while he gets worse and worse. Well, the cold will probably break tonight. He'll be all right tomorrow. I wish I thought so. Aunt Jessica, I've simply got to have Dr. Walton look at Jimmy. If I don't, I'll never forgive myself or you. Anything happens. Now, Alice, don't get dramatic. After all, I have Jimmy's welfare at heart, too. I wonder. Alice. Yes, I wonder. I wonder if you haven't been blinded to everything by an old foolish jealousy. You've been unfair to Dr. Walt for something that happened such a long time ago. You've brooded, kept things pent up inside of you until everything you say and do is warped. You've become selfish, hard, cruel. And I've taken it from you because I wanted Jimmy to have a good home. Do you know what you're saying? Yes, I know what I'm saying. I'm saying something I wanted to say for a long time. I'm tired of listening to your veiled threats about Jimmy and me. Catering to your narrowness the way I have, just to keep peace. Well, I'm through with all that. I'm taking Jimmy to Dr. Walt now. And you can do whatever you want to about it. I don't care. We're going to see Dr. Walt, Jimmy. Then everything will be all right. Five dollars. Well, five dollars. A small, fine bluff, Arkansas. Granny's here's one for twenty-five dollars, Abner. Look at that. Twenty-five. That's Alice. Yeah, I reckon what she wants. He's in the back seat. Would you carry him up to Dr. Ball? Sure, sure, sure. Oh, Dr. Ball, I'm afraid Jimmy's mm -hmm. terribly ill. I telephoned Ken, but I don't know when he can get here. He was out on the case. Put him on that table. Don't uncover him. Hold your watch while I can see it, dear. Alice. 
Uncover his chest. That's enough. Taking this temperature? Yes, just a little while ago. It was over 103. How serious is it, Dr. Walt? Very serious. It's advanced low bar pneumonia. Please, Dr. Walt, you've got to do something. You're the only one that can help. You can't let him die. I'll do the best I can, dear. But you, Alice, and Lum and Abner, you've got to help me. I don't know whether it'll work, but you've got to be my hands. Anything you say, Doc. That Captain Dallas, you'll find a bottle of tablets labeled sulfapyridine and get them. And Adna, get me a glass of water. In cases not so far advanced as Jimmy's, sulfapyridine is almost a certain cure. Usually within 48 hours, the temperature drops to normal and the patient is in, almost entirely out of danger. But in Jimmy's case, the question is, will it have time to work? Give him two of those tablets, Alice. While we're waiting for it to take effect, the only thing that's going to keep Jimmy alive is oxygen. Oxygen. Where am I going to get oxygen? Ain't that what they got down here at the garage? They, them tanks of air? I uh, know that's something else, I reckon. You're right. Abner, you telephone the garage and have Caleb bring up a tank of oxygen right away. Hurry! Hello, Caleb. Uh, have you got one of them tanks of oxygen over there? Oxygen! Them, them tanks of air. Yeah, well, get one over to Doc Wall's office as quick as you can. If we're going to give Jimmy oxygen, there are several things I'll need. You've got to get them for me. I don't know where or how, but you've got to get them. First, I'll need a food jar. A big one with a top on it. Well, that's easy. We've got some of them downstairs in the store. I'll get one. What, what can I do, Doc? I'll need something to punch two holes in the top of that jar. How about a leather punch? Will that do? I guess so. Get it. I don't need your help to get this jar. I ain't trying to help you. I'm going after something else. Uh, Lum, aren't you going to wait on me? I want, um, uh, I want a pound of coffee. Well, you know where it's at. Help yourself. Yeah, take it all if you want it. Here. Will that do? That's rubber tubing, all right. I don't know what Doc aims to do with it, but he's got something in mind. He thinks it'll work till Ken gets here. Here's the oxygen, Doctor. Where do you want it? Put it there. Over a little further, boys. Thank you, Caleb. Wes, you stay here with me. I may need you. Yes, Doctor. Now we need something to fit over Jimmy's face. A piece of rubber to make a mask. Mr. Dr. Barnes, I don't exactly know what you mean, but could you use the bladder from Jimmy's football? Just the thing. Get it. How's that, Doc? Well, that'll do for part, but there's not enough. Well, that's all there was. Hey, does it have to be rubber tubing, though? It could be metal. Why? Well, I was just thinking, don't they use metal tubing in automobiles? Of course they do. Come on, Abner. I, Grannies, I think I know where we can get some. And hurry. Alice, if Lum and Abner do get that metal tubing, it'll have to be thoroughly cleaned, so get a pan full of boiling water. Where are you going, Washington? Dr. Barnes told me to bring Jimmy's football. Football? What's he want with a football? Well, never mind that. Get that wrench. There it is, right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. My grannies, wait a minute, Abner. Looky there. Huh? Hi, doggies. Little red riding hood. I reckon we was right after all along. Yeah, well, we ain't got time for that now. Go ahead and get that tubing off of there. Yeah. Now, Wes, turn on the oxygen.
They've been up there for hours. Wonder what's happening. Turn off the oxygen, Wes. Take off the mask, Alice. I think he'd be all right now. Oh, Dr. Walton. That's the nicest fee I ever received, Toots. I knew you could do it. Leave me over there by the window, love. I think I'll take a little cat nap. I'll get some cover for you, doll. You can all clean up for me. <laughs> sure. There you are. Here, doll, let me put this around you. How's Jimmy, Lynn? Right, oh, how do you, Will? Well, just the man we want to see, any he, Lum? Yeah, I was just talking to Jesse. Uh, she says she does recollect giving you permission to drive this car the night Effie Lou was killed. She couldn't say that. She didn't know I had it out. Oh, so you had me to it. <laughs> just a minute, Wes. Don't do nothing to him personal. Suppose I did have the car out that night. That doesn't prove a thing. It's the word of a little boy against mine. Come on, Wes. I want to show you something. Looky there. Did you ever see that before, Wes? That's the handkerchief that Lom and me give Effie Lou the night she was run over. Now, the rest of it's up to you, Wes. You're under arrest. Hold on, Billy. How is he? He's resting easily now. Your father gave him sulfapyridine and oxygen. Good. Dr. Walt's been absolutely wonderful. Is he asleep? here to lay to rest one of our neighbors. I ain't going to try to give a sermon about Dr. Walter Barnes. You can't give a sermon about a man that lived a sermon all his life. He was just a plain man that lived and gave his life to just plain folks here in Pine Ridge. 
it's all I can say and all you can say in praise of a man like that is that he loved the world and left it better than he found it. Me and Abner tried to find some monument that would show how we all felt about Dr. Walt. Nothing we could buy or nothing we could build would be enough. Dr. Walt left his own monument. Sidewalks wide enough, you know it. That flame fire don't get you a rocking chair, Bessie, so you can sit over in the shade out of the way. <laughs> no, don't do that. She'll be moving in a store there with Ed. <laughs> 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 All right, Granny, there she is, Abner. Who? Oh. Dr. Kenneth Barnes, MD. <laughs> She's a beauty, isn't she, Aunt Jessie? I never know whether you're talking about the ambulance or about Alice. So this time I met the unit. We have you to thank for it. All I did was write a check for the balance due. Don't forget all the other people who chipped in. And don't forget Lum and Abner. They started it. <laughs> Weren't nasty. <that it? laughs> well, we don't have to take no backseat to Adamstown now. We'll never have to take a backseat to Adamstown. <laughs> Kenny, do, do you mind if we take a look inside? Certainly, now go right ahead. <laughs> Granny's now, that's all right, you know what? <laughs> Our dog has had donked on a patient already. Well, I swan to goodness. <laughs> Not only got ourselves a new first aid unit, but we got rid of old Ed, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be a nice comfort place for him to sleep while he's uh, waiting for him at river through there. <laughs> 